Welcome back to Grammarica Outlawed. We got another roundup coming at you this week, guys. I think it'll be a good one, too. I got a bunch of stuff. I got some cultural revolution stuff from China. And uh, Graham looks like he's got some interesting stuff. He's been eager to show me. I'm eager to see what these Harvard papers are about. And of course, I got a, a bunch of COVID stuff. And I got... Uh, Daniel Smith just came out with the new parental rights legislation today. So I have a bunch of stuff from her speech. I have some clips from her speech that she just did like two hours ago. I think. Yeah, I got, I got, I'm glad, I'm glad you picked that up too. I, I got that too. It just, it just came through on my, on my X feed. I thought we have to listen to that because it's already causing a, a bit of a. Yeah, we just can't stir. listen to the whole seven minutes. No, no, no. There was a two. I have like a two minute one or something. It's perfect. It's perfect timing. It's just got that little part clipped out. So, but yeah, I mean, just bear with us because we had a bit of problems with our internet. We don't even really know exactly what it was, to be honest. Um, uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully everything goes okay. But well, yeah, hopefully just, just uh, stick with us. You, if never, you, know. Uh, you never know how it's going to go now that we both live in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. And I can't find my bookmarks in, in X right now for some reason. I, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, because you let your infrastructure rely too much on X. You can't trust Elon with all this there stuff. It is. So I, but I had, to, I had to open up full screen to share my bookmarks. That's weird. I've been getting some uh, actual some emails about your, uh, your Elon appreciation. It seems over the top. Some people are worried about you. Oh, uh, don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm Where just looking at things from a from a logical perspective, that's all. I'm just not oh. jumping into like everything's a psyop all the time. That's all. You gonna get narrow linked? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna get him to make me taller. He's gonna give me like he's got some AI. They could make you taller there. now. They could take some like some um bone out of your arms and then the you know, take three and in two two inches out of your forearm, two inches out of your upper arm. Bam, you're four inches taller. What does yeah. that put you like? Five four, five yeah. five. Yeah. How tall are you now? Oh, five six. Something like that. Five I'm six. Not that, I'm not that short, really. It's like just a couple inches under average, really. So what's the problem then? Nothing what's average? average? Five eight. Just joking. Yeah, I think it's five eight. That seems puny to me. Is that the worldwide average? What is this? You're showing this us. Is, well, this is how I play the clips. It's less. Oh. Than it works well. All right. So I figure I'll start with uh, my Daniel Smith clip and see if it encompasses yours because I listened to the whole thing and sort of cut out the, the best parts. I don't know why they always have to have the music in the background now. Oh, I know. I don't like the music in the background at all. But I left the first part in just because of what you said, where you talked about how it's causing controversy already. I mean, I already got, I got blocked on X by a few people today because I was like, Hey, Music Mike, which is his name. How come you're so worried about kids' parents finding out about their sexual decisions? And he blocked me. You got blocked? Oh, really? And after it had a, you know what happens is you reply to something and then it, you know, they're kind of smug and then you get like a few hundred likes on your reply and then they block you because yeah. Yeah, they get, it's the, the, I guess they call that ratioed over. They used to call it ratioed when I was banging. I don't know what they call it on X. <laughs> well, they call it ratio, but I don't think that's what you're talking about. I yeah, mean, ratio he, he he ratio? yeah, he was ratioed, and then he blocks people. Yeah, that are... I ratioed him. He was already ratioed because he had more comments than likes, so that's already that's right. a ratio. And then if the people that are commenting on your stuff, you know, negatively are getting more likes than your post again. And then you're, you're <laughs> for that's a double game. ratio. What is that? Is that an extended ratio? What do they call that? A su Dude, super, a, super ratio? No, you know, my tweets get no traction unless it's a reply. Yeah. Where? I was picking yeah. up on Yanis, picking on Yanis. And, you know, I caught, I don't know if it's a her or he, I don't even know. I can't tell what's going on there. I don't know how, how it identifies, but, uh, you know, since Notley's gone, it's my new politician to sort of poke at. And um, it tried to, she tried, he tried to block me. You know, you can tell the classic block and unblock because I don't, as a public uh, official, you can't, you don't want to be blocking people, especially Albertans. Um, but you can tell when that what they'll do is they'll block and unblock you. 
because then you're not following them. I've done it to people. I've done the classic block and unblock. Oh, so me, help me out. Help basically, me out. someone's following you and you don't really want them to follow you. But if you block them, that's a little bit much, right? Because they'll notice. They might notice you blocked them. Let's say you're working someplace and you don't want your boss following your Twitter account. Then you notice he's following you. What so you, you do? Block them? But if you block him, then he goes and he notices that you've blocked him. Now it's weird, right? Does it get? Does it automatically unfollow you when that happens? So if you do, yes. So then if you do the oh. block unblock, now he's you've you've effectively caused him to unfollow you. Oh, that's interesting. So that's why people do it. Oh my god, I didn't know that. So that's exactly why people do the blocking because then it stops the guy from following you or the the person. Right? Yeah, exactly. So that's how you can get people to unfollow you that are bothering you with hopefully they don't notice and refollow you. But I noticed that shit right away and uh, refollow and engage. Some of my comments get a thousand likes. My tweets get none. Nobody, it's like I don't even exist unless I'm replying. That's how Twitter is, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, jump into it. This first bit, I think you'll like. Whoops. That's not, it's almost like uh, you think you think I would have that figured out already. But my question. Okay. Did that work? Can you still hear me? No, I can't I can't I can hear you. Yes, I can't hear any clip though. Okay. Wait. My fellow Albertans. Can you yep. hear that? Yeah. Okay. My fellow Albertans, today I wish to address a very sensitive issue involving our children and gender identity. This is not always an easy conversation to have. I strongly believe that we as a society must support and reach out with kindness and inclusion to those who identify as transgender and work what a bitch. to eliminate the discrimination they often experience in their lives. As Premier of this province, I want every Albertan that identifies as transgender to know I care deeply about you and I accept you as you are. As long as I lead this province, I will ensure you are supported and your rights are protected. In the case of children aged 17 and under who identify as transgender, I also want you to know that you are loved and supported as you work through your often changing emotions, feelings, and beliefs. As we all know, children and teenagers are in a constant state of biological, social, emotional, and sexual development and change. They're constantly learning about themselves, trying new things, dealing with biological changes and trying to understand a wide range of new thoughts and feelings. It's a very complicated time. What a pretty, uh, did you find anything, you know, to get upset about? Uh, no, of course not. It was very, uh, very uh, yeah. welcoming. Very. Yeah. Okay. Very well, maybe, maybe this next part, there must be this next part, the part that, that really is, you know, the, this must be the part where she gets bigoted. First, on the issue of gender reassignment treatments for minors. For minors age 17 and under, top and bottom gender reassignment surgeries. Imagine that a politician has to be even talking about top and bottom gender reassignment surgeries. I mean, that, it happened fucking fast, didn't it? Yeah. Like if I had told you this when we started the podcast. Yeah. If Alex Jones would have told you this. I know. And I, and I, and I had top surgery in like 85, I think 84. What? I had a breast reduction, one on my breasts. Remember, remember? Whoa, what? No, I don't remember. Are you being serious right now? Yeah, yeah, of course. Just one, like one. But I mean, they did. There was no problem with that. I mean, wait, you had you had a breast reduction? Yeah. How are you one. finding out about this now? Just my left one. I'm sure I told you before. Yeah, dude, you did not tell me. There's no <laughs> way I would fucking forget this. Yeah, of course I did. So did you feel extra offended when I said you had bigger tits than like, a couple of shows ago? Was that like, <clears throat> like offensive? Well, I would have been if I didn't have that one reduction, but he, but they kind of fucked it up, right? It look, it's looked abnormal ever since I was a teenager. Can I see? Can we see? <laughs> this is what we do for you, folks. This yeah. is what you're gonna want to get. See that, see, that little, Rick, see that little wrinkle there? See, it's yeah, been yeah. like that. It's been like that forever. I'm sure you've noticed when. You know, I'm yeah, well, I could, in front of you and stuff. Yeah, I get it, but I never knew. I never knew you had breast surgery. Yeah, that's. I mean, it was weird. It was like the doctor and my mom. I don't even think I was that. I don't remember being that concerned about it. But they were like, you know, it just looks kind of big for a for a <laughs> boy. So, 
Nowadays, dudes are running around with D cuffs. And I mean, I could have just, I could have just let it grow and just transition. I could have just kept my soy diet going as a kid and just transitioned into a woman. I guess. Oh, there you go. And yeah, you could have stayed. Girl. You could have stayed metro because you just have one tit. <laughs> it's like party on the left, party on the right. Different kind of party. You pick. You'd be like the ultimate unicorn. Well, not, not really, but you know what I mean. I think I, I saw a picture recently of uh, just after that that surgery because the worst part was the tube coming out in the side. It was brutally painful. So you got a mastectomy? Yeah. Well, shit. Grand mastectomy yeah. done, Lyle. Yeah. Oh, damn, there's no way this has been talked about in the show. Someone was actually commenting on the old episodes the other day saying that they feel like your blue balls talk is not aged well. Oh, I think it's fine. I think it's aged fine. I'm, I, I haven't changed my stance on that, but I mean, we don't have to get into all that. Let's just, no, we do. let's just move on. I just wanted to say like, you know, um, that I went through something like that. It was, it was the opposite than what's going on today. Like, you know, but. You know what I really like about going to studio one? The main thing is, there's just a lot more control. I'm moving the cursor back a couple seconds and doing that. When YouTube is driving me nuts or in all of them, trying to get it to land right where you want it to land and you're always off by a few. And yeah. yeah. For minors age 17 and under, top and bottom gender reassignment surgeries will not be permitted. For children age 15 and under, puberty blockers and hormone therapies for the purpose of gender reassignment or affirmation will also not be permitted, with the exception of those who've already commenced their treatment at this time. Minors age 16 and 17 will be permitted to commence hormone therapies for gender reassignment and affirmation purposes, so long as they are deemed mature enough to make these decisions and have parental physician and psychologist approval. For transgender adults, our government is currently working to attract one or more medical professionals to practice in Alberta who specialize in transgender surgery to ensure those individuals transitioning have access to an expert in Alberta to assist them with their extremely unique and complex medical needs, rather than going to Quebec, which is now the practice. Yeah, so that's the clip. That's the part I had. So have you noticed, have you noticed just as, there's some subtle language in there, like how rare it is and how often changing the children's decisions can be. Yeah. It's like all the things, you know, that you shouldn't have to even sneak in there, you know, yeah. it's, it's be common fucking sense. That's a bit yeah. you had. So what well, I, I what, what I've been allowed then to do mine in this day in Alberta, if I was a kid, I was yeah, it wasn't for gender assignment. This is all strictly for she's very, you know, if you just got a big titty and you're a boy and it's just mine you know, was to reinforce my current gender, so that was okay. Yeah, or even if you had like breast cancer or something or anything, any if you, you know, I right. think you could just get your titties smaller if you're a chick too. You know, maybe they're just too big. You just oh, right, right, right. Not, yeah. because, not because you want to be a boy. So you, you yeah, might right. game the system, you might be able to same game the system there. Uh transgender folks if they won't let you do it that way just say you know you just gradually get them smaller a d to a c to a boom next thing you know they're gone when it comes to classroom instruction on subject matter involving gender identity sexual orientation or human sexuality we will be requiring parental notification and an opt-in requirement for each instance a teacher intends to give formal instruction on these subjects furthermore all third-party resource materials or presentations related to gender identity, sexual orientation, or human sexuality in our K-12 through school system will need to be pre-approved by the Ministry of Education to ensure the materials are age-appropriate. For a minor, age 15 and under, the government will require parental notification and consent for a school to alter the name or pronouns of a child. For 16 and 17-year-olds who choose to alter their name or pronouns, parents do not need to give consent but they must be notified. Sorry, what was that last part? For for something, parents do not need to give consent, but what? Once you're 16, you can change your name or your pronoun, but Once they're still going to tell your parents. But they, but they, but your parents don't need to. So your parents can't say no to it then at 16? Is that what you're saying? Basically, at yeah. 16, you can do the social transition, I guess. Yeah. Exactly. But not the not the puberty blockers or not the uh, operations until you're 18. I think 16, yeah. you could start getting that stuff done. Oh, itself. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, 16, I think you could start. No, at 16, you could start the hormone blockers. But you can't get any surgery till 18. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. That's still, I mean, look, that's quite a compromise right there, isn't it? 16 it is. to 15? I mean, come on. Yeah, I would agree. There's a 12 year old. I mean, when were you going through puberty? Mine, I was 50, I think I was like 14, 15, but. When did you get your booby? Uh, when did you get your mastectomy? I think it was, I don't know, 15, 14, 15, maybe something like that. You must have had a weird high school experience. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Plus, you know, we were chasing after girls though all the time at 15. I mean, 15, when, when were you like, you know? It, I got, uh, I I was 17. Like right. I would say puberty was full puberty. Flight. I was like, I was like 15, 16, you know, it was. Yeah. Cause I remember in like grade eight, like hoping I'll get some hair on my balls before I had to shower with the boys in grade nine. Oh, it came through right at the end. You know, you need a little fuzz on there. At least you don't be the dude with no fucking dick hair. There is yeah. a few, more, but luckily, you know, I wasn't one of them. Not that it would have mattered, but it would have fucking mattered at the time. Nowadays we just shave it, you know? Oh, uh, we don't. But uh, <laughs> some people do. Our government also needs to deal with the emerging issue of the unfair disadvantages that young women and girls are experiencing when competing with biologically stronger transgender female athletes in sporting competitions. I strongly believe that those who were born male but have transitioned to or identify as female are owed the opportunity to meaningfully participate in sport. However, there are obvious biological realities that give transgender female athletes a massive competitive advantage over women and girls. It is not beneficial for those women, including those who are transgender, for this divisive and sometimes dangerous situation to continue. That is why the Alberta government will work with sporting organizations active in our province to ensure that women and girls have the choice to compete in a women's only division in athletic competitions and are not forced to compete against biologically stronger transgender female athletes. We will also work with those same sporting organizations to ensure transgender athletes are able to meaningfully participate in the sport of their choice through the expansion of co-ed or other gender neutral divisions for athletic competitions. So which yeah, part, I mean, which part was most offensive to you? Well, I, to me or to the to like, what do I project being offensive to everybody? What do you project being offensive to everybody? Probably the uh, oh, I don't, I don't know either that tra either the sport thing at the end there, or maybe the the parent parental approval on the social transitioning for the younger kids. That seems to be the big one on on the on Twitter. Yeah, it's people seem to be like it, so. The teachers' association was in a big huff the other day. There was stuff going around with that, and it, it, I don't know if it was in anticipation of this coming or, or what. But people are like, this isn't even about the teachers; it's about the parents. Like parents, this is a parental thing. Parents have the guardianship over their kids till they're eighteen. Like, how can this even be a thing? Yeah, it's crazy, right? But uh, that's not what they want to happen anymore. It doesn't seem to be what they want to happen. And then uh, I don't got nothing else to get to. And on on that specific Alberta front, I don't have anything else. I do have I do have other Canada stuff and some CBC stuff. Yeah, I got some other Canada stuff too. Do you want to go into the other Canada stuff, and then I'm going to save some some Canadian uh, jab stuff for the second half, probably. I don't want to get too deep into it, but just some, just some latest. Okay, do you want to do? Do you want to do Made or CBC? Or yeah. Fertility? Yeah. Oh well, either of those. That's fine. Yeah. Any yeah, well, either would, would like there was two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm mean, still kind of blown away. I think it might. You might want to leave that for when I do my stuff the job but oh there you, you just picked it yeah this is gonna be yeah, interesting i'm still pretty blown away by the by the mastectomy i mean you <laughs> really are the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> canada's fertility rate hit all-time low in 2022 statistics canada says i mean I'm, why what is going on why is it showing the stupid ad here oh i know it's crazy eh? statistics canada says the country's fertility rate Rate reached an all-time low of 1.33 children per woman in 2022. What do you need to continue the population? 2.4. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The federal agency that it says that's part of a downward trend that began in 2009. Canada's fertility rate fell sharply in 2020, then slightly increased the year after that before resuming its downward trend in 2022. According to the report, other countries had a similar experience during those years. The decline in the fertility rate between 2021 and 2022 is the largest observed since the baby bust in the early 1970s. And you'd think there'd be more babies from everyone at home during COVID. Just That's fucking what I thought. Google, fuck. That's what I thought, too. Just that like the- says it put Canada in the middle of the pack of 10 high-income countries. Well, high-income. I don't know that we're high-income. So... You know, I don't know why. What do you do? You have any? Uh, do you know why? Why we might? Well, I, I mean, it could be like towards the end of 2021, everybody went through. Like there was a large percentage of people that went through some procedures. I mean, it could be that maybe because lockdown starts 2020. I mean, the baby should be just flying out right at the start of 20. Oh, 2021 should be a big baby year. Did you see the graph like that that, uh, that you were ba- that you had? Uh, your fertility graph? Did, did I saw a graph going around that just shows like how the percentage of? Uh, oh no, that was for something else. Sorry. So yeah, it was it was it was the end of twenty twenty one when it and the beginning of twenty twenty two. So kind of all adds up. I mean, we all know what what we're talking about. We, we do we do know what it's the jibbity 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 j. You know, none of our new videos have gotten in trouble, but they still just keep do- taking down the old. They just took down. Uh, a Mike, a Dank one, and just a Joseph Joe Roop one today about talking no. about. Like, I mean, I don't even know what we could have mentioned. We might have just said the word vaccine. You know, it's like the, these are guests. Just, just see more of our videos. Yeah, yeah. They, and they didn't one, say yeah. what they didn't. They didn't give you the clip. Medical misinformation, bitch. The clip never works. It never works. It says there's a clip, and then you click the clip, and it never works, dude. It just never works. <laughs> <laughs> Backing off its deadline to expand eligibility for medically assisted dying after concerns from the provinces. CP24's Jamie Goodfriend joins us live now with all the details on this story. Jamie? Yeah, they decided to pause this extension of these provisions after a special committee spoke with a number of experts and psychiatrists. That deadline was March 17th. Uh, with more reaction to this, I want to bring in Helen Long, CEO of Dying with Dignity Canada. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Helen. I'm curious what your reaction is uh, to the government pausing these provisions and how do you think it's going to impact uh, patients who are suffering from mental illness who are looking to access made? Yeah, I mean, I think this is yet another denial of the rights of those individuals who have been waiting. For- it can't do like a headset or something like you hear how bad the audio was at the beginning. I know. I know it's crazy. And this is the news, right? They can't. This is like this is your government funded mainstream media. Isn't yeah. it? Or who- Six, what did they get a billion a year? They can't figure out, they can't fly her in. (laughs) This sunset clause, the second time um, to move ahead so that they can determine whether they are eligible or not. I think we're concerned about those individuals, but we're also concerned, you know, more broadly speaking, that constitutionally we're not supporting all Canadians and we're continuing. Just so everyone remembers, they're talking about killing people. That's what they're, they don't, they're, they're they're discriminating against mentally handicapped people by not killing them to discriminate against those with a mental disorder. Discriminate because, uh, part of the, want, because you know, they, response, they want to do that? We won't let them, we won't kill them yet. I don't know. That's probably they because there's some die. crazy people who say they want to die. But I know a bunch of bi- people, people, dude, that want to die on Monday, but they're good on Friday. You know, yeah. literally. Was that the government says they, the system wants to be ready to implement any of these new provisions. And there was also concerns from psychiatrists in, in this committee that uh, said it might not be possible to determine whether or not uh, someone who has mental illness uh, can be treated or, or not. What is your reaction to that? And, and some of the concerns from, from critics who are saying, who are hesitant about you know, giving the thumbs up to, to, for someone getting made if they have a mental illness, but could potentially still be treated. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the laws around people who have an irremediable condition, so a condition that have they've had for years, they've had many, many different types of treatment, and they've been unable to relieve their suffering. We're talking about a very small number of people. I think in the committee's report, there is, in fact, a dissenting report 
um, that speaks specifically to the fact that NAID should be allowed for individuals with mental disorders. We heard psychiatrists testify in the committee that they were ready. Uh, so not every clinician is ready to move ahead with NAID and DSUMC, but some clinicians are. And I think when the law changed in 2016, not everyone was beginning was ready to begin implementing it then. Uh, those who aren't ready don't need to move ahead. Those that are ready should be able to do so. Your organization has been calling for a clear plan of action by this federal government. What are some of the other recommendations uh, that you would like to see implemented? Yeah, the other, the other thing we're really interested in is what we call an advanced request. So the ability for someone now to write down what they would like to see in the future. There's actually a, a bill in the Senate, Senator Wallen's bill S-248, that speak to that, um, specifically for individuals with a capacity diminishing diagnosis like Alzheimer's or dementia. That's certainly the next thing that we would like to see the government turn their attention to. Over 80% of Canadians would support that type of directive. Hello, Long. 80%. Yeah. That means at least one of us should support this directive. Graham, do you think we should be able to kill people? No, 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 no. The directive of the directive of people giving advance notice. 80%. What? The directive of people giving advance notice, like basically a little part of that thing is like, if you give them a notice, like you're coming down with dementia, you're like, when I get to this point, I don't want to live anymore. Like advance notice of people with like worsening conditions. Well, I'd be okay with that. That's common sense. Yeah. I mean, that a lot of that, what she said was common sense. It's when you get into the mental health and the youth, right? But I want you to be careful here. As Theo Fleury says, tell me there isn't a depopulation agenda. But if you're, if your buddy there that's depressed on Monday and okay by Friday, like if you're going to, you know, if you're going to interfere with his maid service, then that's a, what is that? That's a, uh, you can be put into well, jail. Not, for well, years. Not, not my buddy. Oh, wait, so if you try and talk someone out of it, you could go yeah, to jail? Yeah, so in Canada, if you interfere or impede someone for accessing, <clears throat> accessing medical assistance in dying, which is made, or cause them fear. So, I mean, you know what, today, what, I mean, how do you define what causes somebody fear? I mean, you could offend them and they could get scared, right? It could hurt somebody's feelings and they could get scared. You could be arrested and put in jail for 10 years. That's right, folks, jail for trying to save a life. You can't make this stuff up. So here's the actual thing from there dot ca now i should have probably fact checked this i didn't actually go in and find this i just trusted that this is actually from the thing every person commits an offense who engages in any contact content conduct with the intent to provoke a state of fear in a person in order to impede them from obtaining health services from a health professional impede them in the performance of their duties intentionally are we doing that their, now what are we doing that now I hope not. What if our I mean, listeners have been thinking about killing themselves? And well, that's a and good we, question. What our if we good vibes, them? our good vibes, you know, convince them not to. Well, are we intentionally obstructing or interfering with another person's lawful access to a place at which health services are provided by a health professional? I mean, that's kind of like, I don't know, that doesn't sound like that's specific to made but intimidation is the subcategory and obstruction or interference with access i mean i don't know it feels like a bit of a reach to me what do you think well thea has always been a reacher ever since you got <laughs> reach around <laughs> bad bad joke so you want to get an old <laughs> getting get old, 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 yeah, man, I'm sorry. okay ready this is from what odessa or this is from my first official trip. Are you ready for this? Okay, is this Trudeau? Yeah, this is young. This is young Trudeau. Odessa's coming up on the show in a, in a few weeks, and she's dusting off some old footage. This is young Trudeau. Are you ready for this? This is for all of us conspiracy theorists. I went on my first official trip. I was going with my father and my grandpa Sinclair. His grandpa Sinclair. Oh, we know those Sinclairs. And... Again, the music in the background could do without it, but but uh, just just listen to this guy. Up to the North Pole. It was a very glamorous destination. I figured I was finally going to be led into the reason for the existence of, of this high security Arctic base. Look at him. <laughs> was exactly right. We drove slowly. 
So that was exactly right. He got access to a high security Arctic base. Vu and PATH, the buildings on a special top secret mission. And that's when I understood just how powerful and wonderful my father was. And when am I first? <laughs> I don't get it. What did he go see? Is there a what? secret base up there? Yeah, and, and that's how when he understood how powerful his father was. I mean, of course, that then he would want to follow in his footsteps. I mean, I don't know who was in the in the in the background of that video. It was that his mom and his brother, and maybe that was his, his mom and, and his his now dead brother. Well, what? No, there's one of his brothers is super aware of what's going on, and he looked yeah, pretty out of sorts in that. And one's so. dead. And Trudeau doesn't seem to care. All right, my turn. Let's jump to uh, this one, CBC, your favorite broadcaster. We've been talking a lot about misinformation and disinformation being spread, and I'm wondering if you, how difficult is it for the CBC to manage stuff that we've even heard in this committee today? When we hear the viewership metric being misrepresented, right? And we're hearing the the ad numbers being misrepresented. We've heard the leader of the opposition um, say he's going to take over the CBC building on Front Street and turn it into housing. I think that's the only reason we would have heard anything about CBC real estate today. Would you respond to how difficult it is as a public broadcaster to have elected officials at your throats all the time? I will speak on behalf of not only my management team, but the entire uh, 7,500 people that work at CBC. Hudson. Oh, my God. Extremely difficult to not have the love and the support for the work that we do. However, we continue to do it because we believe that serving Canadians, uh, English and French and Indigenous, is worth it. It is a pillar of our democracy. And everything that we do is exactly to your point, to combat disinformation. It's why we have something on our website set that's, that's called Get the Facts. When somebody says something that's inaccurate, we correct it. <laughs> Absolutely critical that Canadians can count on us. We saw the numbers during the COVID years. 25 million Canadians were visiting our digital sites because they knew they could depend on us. And we, as I said before, we are the only service coast to coast to coast. We're running transmission towers, hundreds of them across the north. Without CBC, you lose that connectivity which is essential to our democracy and to our sense of belonging and social cohesion in this country. Wow. You think so? I, I don't know, not anymore with the internet. I mean, there's, but what was this about the layoffs? I mean, I, I don't really, you know, I would have liked to have some examples of their fake news that they've been posting. But let me let me uh, let me play just show something else for of Trudeau here quickly. I, I don't want to get out, I want to keep flowing with this Canadian topic here, but get this quote. The con the very concept concept of a nation founded by European settlers is offensive to me. Old stock white Canadians are an unpleasant relic, and quite frankly, replaceable, and we will replace them. Justin Trudeau, when asked to commit to comment on his open borders immigration strategy. You couldn't find the clip for that? No. Those ones are always kind of sketchy. I see Can lots of these. Yeah. All right, let's, I got more CBC stuff, so I'm going to keep going with that. Okay. I certainly agree with the point you made, Ms. Tate, about uh, that the issue of disinformation and hate. We've seen the far right and their mass... Oh and infrastructure, uh, Fox Entertainment, um, Meta, um, that d allows through their algorithms this uh, uh, tragic growth in uh, toxic hate in all of its forms, uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, racism, misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, it, all those toxic forms of hate. So we, we need to have an institution like CBC that 
provides that, that balance and provides for the real information to counter the far right disinformation that is washing over uh, North America. I, I oh, it's so disgusting. That, uh, a couple of things. First off, the massive subsidies, a billion dollars a year that go to Meta and Google when they have not been responsible in any way uh, in, in, in being uh, a, a voice to counter this hate and disinformation. Um, so my first question is, uh, do you feel it's appropriate that the federal government subsidize so massively and directly by subsidizing the advertising on uh, for Meta and Google? And then secondly, you've mentioned uh, the growth of digital services. You mentioned the streaming services, Jim. Um, I, I'd like to, you to take the opportunity to talk more about uh, the budget that you have in terms of digital and streaming services and what the results have been, uh, both to promote uh, digital resources, you, you flagged this, the BBC, and uh, promoting stre streaming services like GEM. What have the results been? On your first question, I, I don't feel it's appropriate for me to comment on uh, government policy with respect to um, uh, Google and Meta. I can only really speak to how the public broadcaster uh, responds in a, a world where digital giants are more and more taking um, the air out of the ecosystem. Um, with respect to, I'm going to actually invite um, Barb Williams, who hasn't had a chance that's, to speak. That's funny. Hey, can you, you pause it for a second? Digital it's like a it's like a fight over how who can censor the hardest, right? I mean, they're acting as if like Meta and Google aren't completely censoring the truth, anyways, right? And they're letting all this hate in. Well, meanwhile, they're they can just spread lies about the jab and all this other bullshit government propaganda. Uh, one more CBC clip. Oh, that was it. That was the end of that one. Yeah, that was pretty much it. It was close enough. This one is uh, about. Her bonus that she got as a press, but she doesn't, it doesn't seem like she really wants to talk about that. Oops. What did I do? I don't know. It looks like it's just thinking or it's, uh, it's working there. Huh? So this is a standing committee on, on heritage. Yeah, which which basically boils down to the CVC, it seems like. Yeah. Our public broadcaster, you know. Well, I mean, I can play this uh, post-millennial clip if you want about Canadian Parliament. We could puke, puke while we listen to that before I get into something. I got kind of a longer segment that I want to do in the in the first half here. Okay, let me so do I think I got this working. Okay. I would just highlight for you that it's interesting to me because you're saying that these are the metrics, but actually the viewership of the CBC is cut in half since you took leadership in 2018. It's ah. half. So it's interesting to me that you're giving bonuses or performance awards when in fact the CBC is performing the poorest it's ever performed. So bonuses keep going up, they keep skyrocketing. But performance, as you say, the bonuses are given granted based on. I, I really, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to correct the record. If I may correct so, the Ms. record. Tate, my question for you, my question for you, Ooh. for 2023, will you be given a bonus? I would like to correct the record, if I may, Madam Chair. First some of all, facts. I don't believe. She's oh. fact checking on the fly. Yeah, let's see what she says. The number was 16 million in, in last year. I'm going to ask Marco Dubé, who who manages this for the people in culture at our company, to correct the um, the error that um, the member oh, has. Got people in culture, Sorry, VP. Madam Chair, through people you, in culture. I, I do have a question on the table, and that is, Miss Tate, for 2023, will you be given a bonus? I'm going to come back to your question after he corrects the no record, Madam Chair. I would ask you, through you, Madam Chair, the witness knows that. Her instructions here are to answer the questions that have been we given. Have she can correct seconds. the record by sending in a written notice if she wishes. You can do that, Miss Tate. You have, oh my God! You have you've gone uh, over time. My, my time has been interrupted numerous times because the witness doesn't want to answer my question. It's very simple. Will she be given a bonus in 2020? I. It's not my decision whether I get uh, get a bonus or not. Oh, good for that Lethbridge woman. Wow. What decision do you think it is whether she gets a bonus? Isn't she's the president? She's the CEO, I think. Oh, uh, is she? No, she's no, they said her title. It was only, uh, 
uh, a part partial title. It wasn't full CEO or CBC CEO Catherine Tate. Oh wow, jeez. Yeah. Well, it's the board, I guess, maybe or something. Oh yeah, the, it would be the board, but she's getting a bonus. You know, she's getting a bonus. Otherwise, she would have said no. Yeah, exactly. And that just to say, your 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 viewership has been cut in half since 2018. Like COVID didn't help you at all either. You might be more connected, but you're less you're less uh, less viewed, and obviously a not a good um, representation of reality, I would say. So let's just get to this because I, I do want to share this. This is recent recent stuff. So, well, listen, the liberal schemes, scams. And let me let me just let me just put a little context to this. So this is uh, again Theo just saying he stands with Tucker, uh, one of the greatest takedowns of the liberal government in recent memory. Like, I I don't want to make this political really because like I don't trust either side right now at all. But it is interesting how they get so up in arms about Tucker coming over here. It's just it's just uh, unbelievable. So this is Trudeau's. Uh, Employment minister complains about Tucker Carlson's visit to Canada in response to being grilled over the carbon tax and high cost of living. Don't help the millions of desperate, hungry Canadians yeah, yeah. struggling just to get by every single month. This is a fact. When you tax the farmer who produces the food, the trucker who ships the food, and then the cost of heating and cooling and storing the food, Canadians can't afford the food. But these out-of-touch carbon tax crusaders, they don't care. And they're going to quadruple it on April 1st. Conservatives will ax the tax for all for good. But why won't these liberals just pass Bill C-234, reject the Senate amendments, tax the tax on farmers and bring down food prices today? Yeah. The Honourable Minister. Speaker, I'll tell you where Conservatives were focused just over a week ago. A who's who collection of Conservatives gathered for a pep talk from far-right U.S. commentator Tucker Carlson. So what a clown show. I don't know why those three those three people in the front ahead of the speaker stood up, but something weird is happening now where he has to calm everybody down. Colleagues. Colleagues. <clears throat> Colleagues, it's important once again for us to be able to hear the questions and hear the answers. I know that yesterday, if you will recall, there was a member who had complained about the noise level, which made it difficult, especially for people who need to listen to translation. Let I have the news from Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, last yes, week. You can barely speak English, man. He doesn't. <laughs> he was not born in Canada. Oh, mind that. 10 seconds. Rewind that 10 seconds. Well, he says he says the honorable minister in French, I believe. Yeah, but that's the speaker of the house. Okay, yeah. let's, let's just hear it. made it difficult, especially for people who need to listen to translation. Let I have the minister. The honorable minister. Mr. Speaker, I don't know. I want to know where that motherfucker is. Those who have conservatives gathered in Alberta for a lecture in a series with far right commentator Tucker Carlson. just can't stop saying far right. It's un. It's just so gross, but here we go. Carlson. And in that speech, one of them, which focused and which had the premier, Danielle Smith, attend, we heard attacks on megaphones, homophobic jokes, and traditional best hits of MAGA politicians. Mr. Speaker, a conservative nomination candidate in my writing went on Twitter, had lots of fun on it. Here's the question. Will his leader stand with the candidate or call him out, or is he standing with Tucker Carlson? <laughs> what, a, what a shit show. Stand with Tucker. That, that, what is that called? That's the like the question and answer period or something like that. Is that what that is? It's such a it's such a farce, man. It's so gross to listen to. This is what our politicians are doing. They're just going back and forth, calling each other out, and nothing happens. It's it's gross. Well, I shouldn't say nothing happens. I mean, only bad stuff seems to happen. Nothing really really happens that we want. You know, nothing to protect our freedoms or anything like that. So you want to get into the fun stuff or what? Well, yeah, you got more. I mean, I got I got my whole cultural evolution. I think save that for plus. So you okay. might as well finish it up. Yeah. Okay, let's let's do this. This is this is fantastic. I mean, this is uh, 
This is from a guest of ours who was on our show. I think it was 610 on the regular show. This is her post on Substack about leave the world behind. So do you remember when I, when we did that little segment on the people that found those audio files embedded in the video? Do you remember that? The in, infrasound, that extra file. Do you remember that? Mm. Leave the world behind. Uh, and I said, uh, I said, I wonder when those little, those little blips happen in the movie. Like, do they happen at a play, a place where, you know, it's, there's some special dialogue that needs to be sort of hammered into your brain or like, cause we know that infrasound has been used, you know, for nefarious purposes. Right. Anyways, this kind of answers some of it. So it says, use earplugs to watch, leave the world behind, cue up those subtitles and block your ears. Y'all. So for those who haven't seen the movie and plan on doing so, I'm afraid this is a bit of a spoiler, but since my audience is mainly music lovers, people sensitive to the vibrations of music and indeed the vibrations of life itself, I felt called upon to put this information out there. This information concerns the soundtrack of the film. Those who have seen the world behind know, are no doubt convinced that I'm referring to the sections of the plot featuring the noise. When the noise happens, as Where it does... The spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. The total spoiler alerts. So th this isn't just about the, the thing, the embedment of the infrasound. This is also about, I guess, something that happens in the movie that's called the noise. So when the noise happens, as it does in two different places in the movie, the characters fall to their knees and try to block their ears from the horrible sonic onslaught. It lasts for one minute and incapacitates everyone as long as it's sounding. No one can tell where it's coming from. When the noise happens for the first time, the next day the teenage son's teeth start falling out. His parents, Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke, think they may have contracted a disease from an insect bite he got in the woods, or think that he might have. They seek help from the Kevin Bacon character who says teeth falling out is a symptom of Havana syndrome. So, of course, where have we heard that, right? Named after the infamous real-life event that happened in Cuba in 2016, where U.S. and Canadian government personnel were apparently targeted with directed energy weapons. Other symptoms of Havana syndrome included pain, nausea, unceasing headache, and dis cognitive dysfunction. In the case of Savannah uh, syndrome, or the, the Havana occurrence, some of the personnel had to retire because they could no longer work. This was an actual event. I remember it being on the news. So actually, I do have a, I should probably play a clip of that um, because it's, uh, it's definitely creepy enough that I hope that I still have it uh, queued up here. Let me just try to try to play a clip from that. I'll have to bounce back and forth a bit here. Let's see here. Uh, the Havana one was where people were like getting weird, like beamed with stuff or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, ready? This is this this is CNN. I can't hear it. Oh, you can't hear it. You can't hear it. Know what's going on? But you heard what the other ones. Yeah. What happens if you hit that little thing there? Where is that? What little thing? What little thing? The little uh, down in the bottom left corner by the play button. That mute, unmute that. I still no. can't hear it. Eh? Did you say uh, share audio as well when you shared the tab? No, I didn't. I mean, I didn't do that last time, so I found that kind of strange. Yeah, you shouldn't have to. Okay, how about now? No. No. Well, that's not good. Are they saying he thinks it was aliens? No, nah, no. But I mean, honestly, it is a good clip. So let me let me try this again here. Uh, try shutting it down and resharing it. Yeah, that's what I just did. Share screen, use audio tab. That's that's on. I mean, it should do it. <clears throat> okay, let's try again. Used against America. There we go. Yeah. Cuba as well, starting in. And it has perplexed doctors for years. Today, the man who hopes to be the new CIA director was asked how to handle these attacks, as CNN's Kylie Atwood reports. 
I mean, I woke up in the middle of the night um, with an incredible case of vertigo. You know, the room was spinning. Um, I wanted to throw up. Mark Polymeropoulos, a former U.S. intelligence officer at the CIA, was hit in 2017 by an invisible attack in a Moscow hotel. I'd been in places like, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan. I'd been shot at, but this was by far the most terrifying experience uh, of my life. It's a mystery that's plagued the U.S. intelligence community and the State Department for years, an attack which brain experts now say was likely the result of a microwave weapon hitting American personnel in Cuba, China, Russia, and other places around the globe. The U.S. government has... See, I've just never known how much to believe about this when it happened even now. Like, even now it's on CNN. It's like, okay, there's microwave attacks against people all over the world here. Not identified the perpetrator, but current and former U.S. officials believe Russia is to blame. The oh, yeah, there's the Russia thing. The Russian government did not respond to CNN's request for comment. The attack impacted his balance, sight, and hearing. The pain has never wholly subsided. I couldn't, you know, make it through the day. Um, not even close. I've had a headache every day since that night in Moscow. It's never gone away day and night. He had to retire early. And for a dedicated CIA officer who spent his entire career fighting terrorists in the Middle East, it hasn't been easy to accept that an invisible strike took him out of the game. Well, that's interesting because they did say he was a hopeful for the director of CIA. And I mean, they might have just taken out. Maybe this guy was going to be a really good director and they took him out. You know, I mean, there is that, I guess. Right. Yeah, do you think they're just like, uh, so you think it was the, uh, us? You think we did? I, I don't know. <clears throat> no, not us. I, I mean, who knows? But So when the noise happens during the movie, it's loud enough on the soundtrack to disturb to be disturbing to the viewer. But unbeknownst to viewers, the soundtrack contains another surprise. A couple of researchers have discovered that the soundtrack to the movie Leave the World Behind has hidden tracks embedded in it. That's what I was talking about before. They're hidden in the sense that they're not audible. However, the waveforms of the extra tracks can be seen clearly when the movie is downloaded to an editing program. The tracks are infrasonic or below the normal range of human hearing. Examples of infrasonic sound waves can be found in earthquakes, waterfalls, wind, and other weather phenomena, as well as with underground nuclear test explosions. So obviously the waveforms are signals beyond the, new, the human range of the normal range of human hearing generally given as 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Though if the cilia in your inner ear can still detect sound above 11 kilohertz in this era of maximum volume, I'd say you're doing pretty well. So those who read the TOA article on how audio frequencies are used to manipulate our minds and emotions know this is a real thing. Audio weapons have been used by governments since World War I, but this technology goes back even further. If you've been to the pyramids and structures at Chichen Itza in Mexico, your guide probably showed you how that hand clap created an echo of bird sounds. Do you remember that? I do and remember snake, that. And snake sounds. The structures haven't been built to honor the Aztec gods who were depicted in the form of a bird and a snake. The Aztec and Inca civilizations had a sonic weapon called the death whistle that was used in ceremonies, but also against invaders. Imagine hearing this sound multiplied by dozens or perhaps hundreds of Inca warriors. Actually, I should play that. It's uh, no, 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 no. the clap, really, clap. What? The Chichen Itza clap? No, no, this is the death thing. I'm not going to play the actual death whistle because it's super I want to show you this. It's super like it's like he's blowing through like a skull whistle. So I don't, I don't even want to play that. But at the end here, it says the following is an audio reconstruction using samples of death whistles and the recording of a of a horse stampede so it says imagine imagine going into battle the sound of a hundred aztecs charging towards you all blowing this death whistle on horses Crazy, eh? It's very unique. Crazy, eh? Yeah, I remember that. I remember the little jaguar thing too. Yeah. So yeah, the uh, this 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 goes on. It's this gets it gets even better here. So this so this world uh, leave the world behind. Did you know it was well? We we talked about that, right? It was produced by the Obama's production company, Higher Ground. Did you know who the writer director was? 
No. Sam Esmail. He's the guy that did Mr. Robot. Which I mean had some fantastic monologues in there. I mean, it was a great show. I, I finally watched all the episodes uh, a while back. I now that they put them all on the same platform. You may have seen his tweet that's been reposted many times, where he says Obama sent him script notes that scared the fuck out of him. Esmail said that he thought he was making a fictional movie that didn't have much to do with reality, and that he was off by a lot. Obama said that he was only off by a few details. The movie is based on a 2020 novel by Ruman Alam, a writer who lives in Washington, D.C., of course. It was a finalist for the National Book Award. This is the teaser from Amazon. A magnetic novel about two families, strangers to each other, who are forced together on a long weekend gone terribly wrong. That's not exactly my takeaway, however. To further underscore the movie's dark side, here are a few notable points of interest about the release dates. So get this. This is, this is crazy. The world premiere was on October 25th, 2023. This date has a number of military and political associations like the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution, the 1944 Japanese deployed kamikaze bombers on American warships for the first time in the Battle of the Lete Gulf. 1940, Benjamin Davis became the first African-American general in the Army. 1983, the U.S. Marines invaded Granada. It was released in the theaters on November 22nd. Most mature folks need no reminder of what happened on November 22nd in 1963. What happened? The assassination of JFK. All right. It began streaming on Netflix on December 8th. So all these opening, like, you know, like, uh, very interesting timing for all these different levels of opening and release. Some pundit, oh, hang on, at, at uh, December 8th. So the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. The next day, which was the 8th, the U.S. declared war on Japan and entered World War II. Some pundits say that the movie Leave the World Behind is yet another example of so-called predictive programming. So I left a lot of that out because we've talked about predictive programming a lot on here. But did you know that one of the earliest citations of predictive programming was that book Futility um, in 1898 that came out? It was... It was uh, the plot involved a ship called Titan that sank after hitting an iceberg. Sound familiar? This the sinking of the Titanic occurred 14 years later in 1912. Those yeah, of us I all that old stuff, yeah. Yeah, those of us familiar with Cliff High's work know he's a linguist and a computer scientist who created software programs to analyze trends in human speech. From this data, he's been able to predict a number of events accurately. I believe this works through the collective unconscious, which is Carl Jung's term for the collect collection of images, archetypes, and knowledge shared by all of humanity. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of divisive black and white references in Leave the World Behind. One of the first scenes is of the white family enjoying the beach in Long Island. When an oil tanker beaches itself on the shore, everyone runs away. Authorities are summoned and the beach is evacuated. The ship's name is White Lion. That was the name of the first slave ship that brought Africans to Virginia. Another scene shows that Ethan Hawke, that his character driving by a sign that says Taney Farms, uh, the U.S. Chief Justice Robert R Roger Taney was a big advocate of slavery, not trusting white people was shown, and Julia Roberts doesn't trust anybody. There was a massive cyber attack in there. Obama, this guy was wearing a T-shirt with Obama that said, Obey. If you turn that image upside down, it looks like a flying saucer hover, hovering over a control tower. There's a NASA T-shirt, of course. Weird planes fly over um, in this one thing with bright red flyers with Arabic lettering. It says, Death to America. So, I mean, if this is like, you know, <clears throat> a... Uh, a uh, predictive programming. That's not good. Let me just show another example of some predictive programming, which kind of we all might have forgotten about. <clears throat> See if you remember this one. This man, Tad O'Malley, has been making claims. Claims about what? You and everyone you know has a piece of DNA in your genome put there without your knowing it. Put there by whom? Well, that's the question of the day. This is an internet lunatic. You're not saying you believe him. Hold on. <laughs> you don't need to, I don't even need to say who this is and what this is. Son, Agent Einstein, you're talking to a scientist. Uh, forgive me, Assistant Director. It may sound insensitive, but the suggestion is pure science fiction. What I'm saying 
Agent Einstein, is that the facts, as I understand them, cannot be discounted out of hand. No one has the right or the ability to tamper with your DNA. Unless we gave them that ability. Did we give them that ability? Was Yeah. We, well, we didn't, but they did. They might have. I mean, did the CIA or the FBI give them that ability? <clears throat> aliens? That's, that's the question. The aliens? <laughs> so the, so I'm just going to get... Them? just going to finish this off it's almost done here no they're not oh I, oh, I don't think so i think they were talking about the intelligence agencies well, so, so they have our dna from the from the shots no just no they're DNA. modifying dna uh, i mean they already have you know dna sequence and stuff i guess what they're saying is they're they're adding dna to people or they're they're modifying their dna anyways either way it's it's just trying to predict the RMNA, right? Or our mRNA. So this, uh, this black father, the main, the leading man character, um, of whom a defense contractor who's given some timely tips, he says, uh, taking over this? a country. What? Have you seen this? No. No. I don't want, I don't think I could want to now. It just sounds super creepy. Like why like why why make a movie with racial tension in it like that? You know, it just seems like brutal. The white you're stereotyping the white people and the black people. So this guy says to take over a country, create isolation, then synchronize chaos among the populace. After that, civil war and collapse are inevitable. They don't need to be orchestrated. That's exactly what is happening in the movie as a result of the cyber attack. Returning to the embedded infrasonic audio files, another curious thing that is, oh, this is the best part. Get this. This is like the, the, the conclusion here. Another curious thing is that inside the Long Island home, where many of the scenes take place, there are several modern abstract paintings. So there's like all these paintings on the walls, right? Except they're not paintings. They're greatly magnified spectrum analysis screenshots of the audio files, presumably the same audio files the viewer is subjected to. So you're getting this subjection of this infrasonic wave file and you're seeing that projection blown up as a modern art on the wall in the scene. And I don't know if you've ever seen that weird professor doing that experiment with all his students in this university where he, he writes, he's got a, um, on a prompter, he's got sentences, like a phrase on a prompter and he plays this sound over and over. And the sound he plays is the same sound. And when he changes what's written on the prompter, it changes what you, how you hear the sound to match the words you're looking at. It's crazy. It's super creepy. Have you, you haven't seen that? I haven't seen that, no. Oh, so anyone watching the movie is inundated not only with whatever sonic weapon that, that's embedded in the audio, but images of it as well. Of course, we're also watching the characters become incapacitated whenever the audible sonic weapon is deployed in the movie. So, I mean, what a perfect thing. You're instilling this, this fear, this automatic sort of response you to know sonic what this weapons. Sounds like to me. Marketing. What? Marketing? Marketing. Oh, I wish. Maybe. I don't think they're that smart. I mean, it's, I mean. It's, yeah, I think they are. Man, what they're I think they're just, this is like the, this is marketing. Oh, I, I don't think so. But yeah, anyways. I bet you. That's a good, I like the theory. I do like the theory. I just, I don't agree. Now everyone's going to go watch the movie to see. But I mean, that's. I well, I who's going to go after hearing all that? I don't need to go watch it to see that. What? I, well, you could at least watch it for the show. I mean, it's like a third hand book report. But I feel like that's like some weird hippie modern art thing, you know, where it's <laughs> like, oh, we're going to put this little sound uh, in there and we'll have pictures of it too. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. Because, I mean, a million people have watched it. What happened to him? Even this guy we, watched it. I think Did we have to activated? ask ourselves, what? Did this guy get activated by the sound? I don't know. It's not a guy. It's Sue. Sue Terry. Go down to some comments. Let's see. I want to see a I, uh, I think we have to ask ourselves why Barack Obama, as a former U.S. president, would, number one, make a disturbing movie like this. Secondly, why is he funding this movie that basically trashes America and Americans? My suggestion for anyone about to watch the film is to use earplugs and activate the closed captioning or subtitles. 
enjoy your popcorn if you have any appetite left. So the comments, yeah, in, instead of earplugs, I suggest one better. Don't watch the film. I firmly believe our very conscious being and collective unconscious has to repeatedly reject and ridicule the authoritative, centralized, wacko agenda into oblivion. Create the world you want to live, people. Oh, and there's my post. You don't, you don't, you don't. Yeah. Huh. I bet marketing. I mean, yeah, uh, just trying to make a bunch of money. Because you'd think if you're going to try and like influence people, you would like be sneaky about it. It wouldn't be like Obama's movie. Maybe though, who knows? I think it's time to get into the second half. Second half of show. Or do you have good news, or have you given up on the good news already? No, no, I just we have too much content, man. It's just, it's even today. I thought, do we have enough? And then it just goes on and on. I could just keep going on and on. I mean, there's too so much, much interesting content. stuff happening right now. It's, it's fantastic. For good news. Well, if you don't have good news, I do have this. Let's play this. I'll play this as I shut down the streams as we go into our second half of show. Of course, if you guys want to get that, head over to outlaw.ca. Sign up for Plus today. It's only six bucks a month, guys, and you could get it. And uh, away you go. You could also get it on Rockfin. You could get it. You would have been able to get it on, you know, with the new members feature on YouTube. We could have even done it right here, but they demonetized us. So we can't do anything like that on YouTube anymore. You can only support us, GrammericaOutlaw.ca, or through Substack, or through Locals. You get the show through Rockfin. That's all the different. Andre really likes calling you dad. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> you know that your dad had a mastectomy? I mean, that's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> Get a whopper of a titty. Um, anyway, Gramerico Love to See is really the best place to support us. And if you do that and you email us, then uh, Graham will get you the video anyway if you want the video. But you can also just sign up through Stubs, Substack if you prefer to do that. You can just sign up through Locals. Get the video on Rockman. I thought that's all the places, right? Yep. Get the GrammericaOutlaw.ca for the podcast. Now let's, uh, I got this for of what's going on in the UK, specifically in the 1 to 14 age group. So, and as I do that, I will shut down the streams. Um, what ages 1 through 14? Uh, in 2020, their excess deaths was minus 9%. In 2021, it was minus 7%. In 22, it went up to 16%. And in 2023, it's 22%. So, so it's 22% 22, 22 above baseline. Above baseline. And what's interesting about this is the excess deaths of the UK children actually went down during 2020 and, and started to rise again in 2021. It's in my book. We, we, we show the rise started when the uh, magic juice started to be issued to children later in 21. What's interesting is yeah, yeah, you have to ask yourself, well, why did it go down in 2020? What's the, what's the, the biggest cause of accidental death for children? Uh, it's accidental. Hospitals? It's, hospitals. It's, it's usually movement activities, you know, falling into a pool, drowning. Jabs well, there hospital. were lockdowns. Deaths went down during lockdown for children as of less activity. But sure enough, we've reopened. There's no pandemic. But now in 2023, UK children 1 through 14 appear to be mysteriously dying at an excess death rate of 22%. That's a big rate. That's, that's a big rate. 